live from Boulder, Colorado. This is Fastlane Truck and... And Kent with MrTruck.com. <laughs> wow, this is our new open for Ask Mr. Truck. Yes. And this is our seventh episode. Yes. And this is what's really cool. We just got back from SEMA, basically. Yeah. And we saw a lot of you folks out there. It was neat meeting you, taking pictures with you. But that was awesome. Well, I have a lot of... A lot of questions again <laughs> this time. Yes, and, this is good. This and is I see good. you brought your Super Duty. Yes, here. I had to drive something here. My, All right. drive my truck. What is that? You have a that bowl is, on the That is my flying Longhorn bowl. Wow. The other part of him is in the back of the truck. You've got you've got a theme of red and white and then everything well, else in Ford black. Well, Ford kept getting their logos bigger. And I thought, well, if you're not going to pay me for advertising, why would I put your name on the front of my truck? Nice. I like it. <laughs> this question comes from Jess Siegel out of Pinehurst, North Carolina. And just says, I would like to purchase a mid-size pickup truck, and I've narrowed down the choices to two. Tacoma TRD Off-Road and Colorado Z71 with the Duramax. A lot of people like the Tacoma that in the Colorado. Baby, yeah, that baby Duramax. And just says, I need the best overall truck. What are your thoughts uh, related to fuel economy, reliability, maintenance issues, and also off-roadability? when spending around $40,000 for a midsize? Well, you know, we have the fuel mileage, we go with the baby Duramax yes. in Thailand or where yes. it is. And the Tacoma is probably the best off-road unit out there. Of course, the, the Z71, without that little chin guard. You gotta take that off is if very, you wanna go off-road. Yeah, it's very capable. So I don't know, I mean, if, I don't fit the Tacoma. My body is not made for Tacoma. I, the, the Colorado I fit great in, so I'm a big fan of that. So I lean toward the Colorado just for fit. The Tacoma, you know, they could last forever. It would be great off-roading, but I'm not comfortable in it. And, I, you know, I mean, if that was your main goal, was driving to work and driving off-road, Tacoma's great. I think for everything else, I would go with the Colorado. Next question comes from Doug Wilson. And it's actually not a question, but it's an offer. I have a 2006 uh, 2500 HD with 21,000 miles. Oh, it's a young puppy. <laughs> That's incredible, Doug. Um, <laughs> It spent most of its life in the garage because I drive my other trucks and not this one very much. I'll be happy to loan it to you for your old versus new. And he's from Moab. Oh, yeah. He's in Moab. He is, and I was telling Roman, this would be cool. We'd take my, my toy hauler, fill it full of ATVs, grab us a six liter, new one, and go to Moab and run them all over out and there. And meet Doug out there? Meet Doug and have fun, you know. So okay. I don't know if Roman's going to spring for that, but that would be fun. <laughs> the next question comes from Ben. He's from the Ohio State University. He's the campus area bus service supervisor. So that's really great. Um, he says he's in the market for a new half-ton truck, preferably a GMC or a Chevy. He tows a 22-foot flatbed trailer three or four times a month. And his question is, um, he's never had a large tow mirrors mm -hmm. on a truck that come with options. Um, are they worth the investment? So usually, you know, it's pretty sizable investment, maybe six hundred dollars or more. Yeah, I, I'm. I really like the factory tow mirrors because you know now the new ones they'll telescope in and out. They have the big lights on them. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff that they do, and uh, so I, I go for that. But the thing about a flatbed it depends on what he has on that flatbed. We have a flatbed, and a lot of the times we don't have the best mirrors. If you don't stack clear the edge, an eight and a half foot trader, then you have to have wide mirrors. But a lot of times you're like with the water totes, we have all kinds of visibility. I like flatbeds for visibility because very seldom do you actually load all the way up the edges unless you're hauling hay or something. Okay, next question comes from Brandon. And he, uh, Brandon actually wrote a, a large, um, large, large, large question email. here. So I'm, trying, I'm gonna try to summarize this question. Uh, the crux of it has to do with the V10 engine in the Ford Super Duty. Right. And we've, uh, at TFL Truck, we actually haven't tested one in the last few years. Right. But I would like to. Yeah, I'm I've driven quite a few of them, but yeah, they're 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 not a fleet market because they're actually on a cabin chassis type truck mm -hmm. or a Class C RV. So we don't get a chance now to get new ones, and that that was a big deal. That six eight, and you know it's aluminum head. It's been around quite a long time. I mean, I remember we talking about that. The excursions that was an option. Yep. And that <laughs> that's part of the reason the excursions is not here anymore. Cause and they, the four thirty. Yeah, they came out with it. Was it again? It was two thousand two thousand one. And what they first shipped out to all the dealers was the 6.8 with a 430 rear end. I mean, you're talking about terrible gas mileage. It's a tow monster, yeah, right? Yeah, and that, and that had a 44-gallon fuel tank. <laughs> but when that came out, fuel jumped from whatever it was, $1.25 to like $1.70 or some crazy thing. And so fuel went nuts. And 
those didn't sell, and that's sad because I really liked the excursion. And when it came out the diesel, it was even better. And and but that was part of the marketing problem that killed excursion. The other part of Brendan's question, he says, you guys should do an old versus new. A lot of people like old. Everybody versus likes new. his old versus new. Yeah. He says, how about you compare an older V10 to a new 6.2 liter V8 from Ford? Or the new EcoBoost V6 and F F150. That would be interesting, but you know the EcoBoost is not available in Super Duty, so we can't compare apples right. to apples. Right. I mean, the 6.2 is that's what this has in is the 6.2, and the new one has more power for 17. That would be interesting. I would like to have that, but you know, it's so hard. Like we talked about last time, testing old versus new. How do you find an old one that's in good enough shape? It's not about to blow up. And then we know the history mileage. of that. Yeah. You got to know the history of it because you want to be apples to apples, and if you're testing something that's on the verge, verge of, of you know having problems, it's not a good test. Next question comes from Ryan, and Ryan, I, I cannot pronounce your last name, so I apologize. Um, Ryan says, "I love your videos, so thank cool. you, thank Thanks. you, Ryan." He says, "I saw the Pro Trailer Backup Assist feature a while back as an option on the F-150. However, I just purchased a 2017 Super Duty." And this truck does not come with a Trailer Pro uh, backup assist. Did Ford discontinue the feature on a Super Duty? Question mark. What can you tell me? Well, the Pro Trader was never offered on a Super Duty, and on a half ton on the F-150, that's where it is, and that's the knob and all that for backing up. That's on an electronic rack and pinion. So anything electronic, the computers can do, and when that's a steering system mm -hmm. with cameras that show where the trailer is, and yeah, but. The Super Duty is not rack and pinion. It's not electronic anything. It is rack, mechanical um, uh, recirculating balls, what it's called, mm -hmm. which is a gearbox, a drag link, and then the balls on your on your tie-ins. But so they, they they can't control it the same way, and that's why. How about our book? Our book answers a lot of those questions. Truck nuts book, TFL trucks guide to pickups, and of course, you know, you wrote a gigantic portion of this. Well, we both, we both wrote the book, and you have the cool parts about the contest that TFL does. And I, I try to give guidelines on buying a new truck versus used truck, diesel versus gas, and, and trailer safety, and, and all things you need to know about trailers and how to judge a trailer that will fit your truck. And, and it's, it's interesting when you know, talk about teenage safety, and that's, I think it's a great book. I, there, there's nothing like it on the market. That's why we wrote it, because you can't get those answers unless you look through a zillion websites, and then you don't know what you're doing and um, it's on sale. You can go to trucknutsbook.com and there are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, independent bookstores, and Mango publishers right, right, right. who are our publishers, so you can get the book there. And it's a holiday season. Yes, great so, Christmas gift. Great uh, Christmas you could gift. Uh, uh, stocking stuffer right here. And then you guys are watching TFL and all the videos we do with testing the trucks. This shows you how we do it, what we look for, what started all the, I mean, the whole ball of wax about that, so you'll know more about those tests we do, the yep. Ike Gala and all that. You can understand how it works, what we look for, yeah, there's do it. Yeah, there's not a lot of data. There's some data. We talk about off-roading and towing, of course. But it's mostly stories mm -hmm. and also, you know, just some hints yeah, about, yeah. about trucks. Yeah, a lot of guideline about what to do in this situation. So I, it's it's a helpful book. Well, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real-world reviews. And where else? MrTruck.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See you next time.